All right, let's add some pictures to our CNC plaque here. So I'm just gonna go to Google. I'm gonna type in Capitals logo and I'm just gonna find something. So we talked about this in class, but not every picture is going to work well. All right. So type in whatever you want into Google Images. What I do is I click over my picture on this side. Don't copy this one, but if you click on it and then copy this one, it usually works. So I'm gonna right click, copy image, and control V to paste. So that gives me this picture right here. All right, now again, we need nice lines for our machine to follow. If I zoom in all the way here, I start seeing pixels. We don't want pixels, we want vectors. So luckily, this software has a uh, little tool built in to help trace our images here. All right, it's called the bird button over here because it's shaped like a bird. So if you ever hear me talk about the bird button, that's the trace bitmap button right here. So I'm gonna click on the bird button. And it says, hey, no bitmap selected. Well, I need to click on my picture. So I'm gonna click on it. Now it is selected. Now, very first time you do it, it's gonna to default to color. But since it only carves it out in one color, we don't really want that color option. What the color button is for is like, let's say I have this picture right here and it's got uh, blue lines, red lines. Let's say it only wanted red lines. If I click on the red, what that's gonna do is it's only gonna copy the red lines. I don't want that though. So we want to switch it to black and white. And then we're going to bring this bar up and down. And this is where a little trial and error is. So I'm going to, if I bring it up too far, I get too much detail. If I bring it down, I lose everything. So kind of happy medium somewhere in between there. And then I'm going to scroll down and hit preview and hit apply. If I like it, I'm going to hit apply and close. So what this just did is if I zoom in now, I have my line right here that the machine can follow, and I have my original picture right here. All right. That looked like it worked well. I'm just gonna remove this picture out of my way just to get out of my way. And then here are the vector lines that I've left up with. So let's just say we wanted to carve this out right here. All right. I'm gonna go to Toolpaths. I'm gonna hit this little pin so it doesn't disappear. And the one we are doing is called the V-Carve Engraving Toolpath. So the second row right here, this first one. All right, so I need to select my vectors. So click on it till it turns pink. Hold down Shift. Click on whatever I want. You can also hit Control-A on the keyboard for Control-All. It will select everything. Uh, my tool right here. You will need to change your tool most likely. For start depth, leave start depth at zero. What that is is saying, hey, I'm going to start at the top of the board and go down from there. Leave your start depth at zero. For your tool, I'm going to hit select. Uh, your screen might look a little bit different, but over here on the left side, imperial tools. We've got imperial and metric. We want imperial because we're working in inches. We want V bits. And we want our 90 degree, one half inch V bit right here. And I'm gonna hit select and close. Uh, just quick little talk about the different types of bits here, right? So depending on how you're cutting, what you wanna cut, you've got different things right here. So this right here is called an end mill. All right. So this goes in the machine this way, this part spins around and cuts whatever. You can see, is flat on the bottom there. Let's see if I fix my camera. All right. This one right here is called a ball nose or a ball nose bit. All right, so you can see the bottom of that is rounded. So that's nice for like three dimensional things where you need a nice smooth surface. The one we're using is called a V bit because it is shaped like a V. So you can see it comes down to a little point right there. And that didn't work. All right, so it comes down to a little point right there. Now, all three of these will cut, but they all, will all make it look a little bit different. So the one we're using is called a V-bit right here. So you can see it's got that, that's a 90 degree corner right there. 
all right, you see? And that's why it's called a 90 degree V-bit, all right? So we want our 90 degree V-bit. After I select that, I'm gonna hit edit. Uh, we might have to change these numbers. I'll post these numbers on Schoology if we need it. But our pass depth, we're just gonna just double check that this has 0 0.125. So if it doesn't, 0 0.125. Uh, my feed rate is 70. So your pass depth is how far it goes down each time. Your feed rate is how fast it moves. And my plunge rate, we'll put that at 30. And that's kind of how fast it goes down. And we're going to hit OK. If you need me to look at those numbers just to double check, let me know. I'd rather double check that than you break the machine. All right, so I've got everything selected. I'm going to hit Calculate. You may get this, uh, selected vectors may contain overlaps, which cause unexpected results. Just hit continue anyway. Ignoring one unsuitable vector, okay. All right, so this looks a little bit weird. That's not what an E normally looks like, but remember this is how that tool bit, that bit is actually going to move around on that tool path to cut out my material right here. So the red is where the bit is just moving. The blue is where it's actually cutting. And because it's that V bit, what looks weird here when I actually go to preview, so I'm gonna hit preview visible toolpath, it's gonna go through and it'll actually look normal. So I'm gonna speed this up a little bit. All right. Um, to move around here, so I'm using the mouse, the scroll wheel zooms in and out. If I click and hold the scroll wheel like a button and drag it around, that's the panning right here. And then if I right click and hold that down, that is orbiting. All right, so that's my zoom, pan, and orbit here. And now this looks pretty good. I'd be fine with that. All right. Let's say I wanted to actually take this and cut it out. Or let's, let's actually, let's adjust it real quick. Let's just say, hey, I want to center that, make it look a little bit better. So I'm going to go back to my 2D view up top. Uh, let's kind of shrink this so it fits a little bit better. Let's say I wanted it centered. I can click on it. You can try to get close. It'll kind of help you out a little bit. But this button right here says align selected objects. If I click on that, I can align it left and right, I can align it top to bottom, or I can do both of those at the same time. All right, so that's how you can center some stuff. And let's just bring this down. Now, I've moved some things. If I go back to my V-carve, it has my original stuff, and I don't want that. So I need to recalculate my toolpath. So I'm going to right-click, say recalculate this or recalculate and that's going to do all the math again to figure it all out again. Uh, if I want to go back to my preview, this button right here in the bottom left of these is my preview button and I need to reset my preview because it still has that first one. So I'm going to hit reset preview and then preview visible toolpath again and this is my new one. Alright, so that looks pretty good. I like that. If I wanted to carve this out I need to save my toolpath to a USB drive that we're going to take to the machine. So you're going to grab a USB drive. I left mine in the other room, apparently. Anyway, uh, doo -doo. and then we're going to hit this Save Toolpath button right here. Um, before you save it, just take a look to see how long it's going to take. So this second button right here says Summary of All Toolpaths, Including Estimated Time. Click on that says that's going to take 5 minutes and 26 seconds. That's perfect. Try to keep it under a half an hour. Um, realize you have to do this during class time. I'm not going to watch your stuff while you're in another class. And somebody else from the next class needs to use the machine too. So we need to be able to get it all done in time before the end of the bill. So keep an eye on the clock there. All right, so this says it's going to take 5 minutes. That's perfect. All right, so I'm going to save it. Over here is Save Toolpaths. Now, very first time you open this, you might get this no associated post processor. Uh, just hit later. Say, hey, I'll figure this out later. All right. 
we need to tell this what machine we have. And it is very important you tell it exactly what machine we have, because if you don't, it's not going to work. It's like if you put a PlayStation game in an Xbox, it's not going to work. So the one that we have, our CNC is called a Shark. It says CNC Shark dash USB arcs inch dot tap. So over here in my post processor, click this. It's roughly alphabetical. So I'm going to go down to CNC Shark USB arcs inch dot tap. Right, CNC Shark USB arcs inch dot tap. I'm going to hit save toolpath and I'm going to find my USB drive. So when I plug in my USB drive, let me find one real quick. All right, I got my USB drive. I'm going to plug it into my computer. In here, in my save as, you're going to go down to find it. A lot of times it says this NFAN E or whatever E drive it is. File name, put your initials and period number. That's it. Just So mine's going to say PB7. If you put a longer name, when you go to the machine, it cuts it off and you don't know what it is. So put your initials and period number only. And I hit save. Make sure it's that CNC shark USB arc cinch dot tap. Hit save. Now it is saved to that flash drive. Now you can take it out over into the machine. All right. I'm going to make another video here about uh, if you want more complicated pictures than just a simple logo like this and also what to do, what to do if you get some errors and uh, things like that.